brothers and my sisters, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. During our Bible study session now, we ask that you have your Bibles. If you don't have your Bibles, be sure you get a pen or pencil to write down these scriptures, which is very important for you and for me. But uh, before we do anything, let us bow our heads. Eternal God, our Father, as we come this afternoon for, your, for the study of your word, we ask that you open up our ears and our hearts that we may receive a blessing from on high. We ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to work in me, through me, and I may speak to your people your word, Lord. Sanctify us now and continue to keep us to be obedient to your will, to your way, and to your word. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Our, our theme scripture this evening is coming from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. This is a very important scripture that you must um, get because a lot of people don't believe this, but I'm here to tell you this is the word of God. Hebrews 9, 28 says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. That's the scripture, the theme scripture for this afternoon. And this afternoon we're going to be talking about the new birth, the new birth. Uh, we all know, well, maybe not all of us, uh, John, in John's gospel, Jesus told Nicodemus in chapter 3, verse uh, 3, uh, Jesus says to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. All right? Uh, and Jesus also told Nicodemus, uh, verse 7, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. So that's our, uh, our scripture text, uh, St. John chapter 3, verse 3 and verse 7. Jesus told Nicodemus, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. What does is, what is born again mean? Well, it simply means that you and I, uh, the first time we was conceived, we was conceived in sin. So that brought death unto all. But since Jesus uh, uh, died for you and I, that we might have life and more abundantly, he told, just like he told Nicodemus, he's telling us the same thing in verse 7 of St. John chapter 3, verse 7. He says, marvel not. In other words, don't be surprised. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. For those of us who don't know that story, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Uh, he was one of the rulers in the, in, the, in the temple or in the synagogues of, of, of those that came to uh, hear what they had to say. But Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, the Bible says. Maybe it was early in the afternoon and there were too many people watching. But the Bible says he came to Jesus by night and had a conversation with Jesus. And um, he, he asked Jesus, how can a man be born again? And Jesus told him that that which is born of the flesh is the flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is 
the Spirit. Then he told him, Marvel not that I said unto thee, he must be born again. As we talk about the new birth this evening, it is of utmost importance that we have a clear understanding of what Jesus meant when he was speaking to Nicodemus, when he said, he must be born again. The new birth is a spiritual birth. It is as much a spiritual as a natural birth. It is not just a figure of speech. The first birth is of the seed of man, and the second birth is of the seed of God. Well, that's where the difference comes. Uh, the seed of man, uh, man was corrupted back in the beginning, and ever since that day that man was corrupted, uh, he, he, he listened to his wife Eve, and he ate of the fruit that God told them not to eat of, because God told him you could eat of any tree in the Garden of Eden except the tree of uh, knowledge of good and knowledge, knowledge and evil. So uh, Eve brought the fruit to Adam, her husband, and uh, the Bible doesn't say what kind of fruit it is, but people got all kind of fruit that they name. Some say apple, some say pear, some say orange. But the Bible says the fruit could have been any kind of fruit because the tree looked good. Of course, the tree looked good because God made it in the beginning. Uh, so uh, we must understand the figure of speech. Uh, man was born of the seed of man, and to receive the new birth, you have to reborn, be born by the seed of God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Uh, listen at what Peter writes. Being born again. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So you and I, hallelujah, we have to be born again of the seed of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Now I tell you like I tell you all the time, when I come to teach Bible study, I ask that you have your Bibles with you. Uh, if you can't find it, write down the scriptures so you can read it later on, okay? The Word of God. Therefore, you cannot become a child of God by joining the church. Let me say that again. You cannot become a child of God by joining the church. The human, uh, 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 no more than a monkey, can act like a man. Well, why you say that, Reverend Mac? Uh, wow, that glad you asked. He may act like a man by joining the human race. He may act like a man, does like a man, and try to live like a man, but he will still be a monkey. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 now, if by some miracle the monkey could be born again of the seed of man, then, only then, could, be, could become a man. <laughs> if he is born of the seed of man, then the only way to become a child of God is to be born again. Let me say that again. 
the only way to be, to be born, to become spiritual birth, you have to be born of the incorruptible seed of God. What is the new birth? That is the new birth. Uh, so when you be born again, you are born again by the seed of God. Uh, we says here, which is in the scriptures, uh, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, uh, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What's that first word now? If, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Confess means to speak it. You must speak it. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, when Jesus hung on the cross, and they took him down from the cross and buried him in a borrowed tomb. Listen to me close now. I said, borrowed tomb. So Jesus borrowed a tomb for three days and three nights which means that he wasn't going to stay in the grave because on the third day morning, God the Father raised him up from the dead with all power in his hands. And he has given you and I, those of us who have been born again, that same power to love by, to share by, to talk by, to walk by, to act by, to love by, to see by, to hear by, and to do everything that is right before him by. So you will know that you've been born the second time. Now, it's, it's, not, it's not hard, y'all. Uh, 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 when you say these words, you have to mean it. From your heart. Uh, Jesus says to us, everyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But, uh, and that's true. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now that includes any and every body. The dope addict, the, uh, the uh, transvestite, uh, the LGBT community, it doesn't matter who you are. It depends on what you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart uh, that God raised Jesus from the dead. And he did by the power of his might. Uh, the only way, the only way to become a child of God is to be born from above, hallelujah, by the incorruptible seed of God. I said the incorruptible seed of God. This is what Peter says, we have to be born again of the incorruptible seed. Man's seed is corruptible. It's been corruptible far from the beginning and it's corruptible today unless you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. The new birth is a new creation. Now we look at Ephesians Excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The new birth is a new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 
verse 17. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if any woman be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. All things are passed away. All those things you used to do, go to the clubhouse and party down like it's 1999. All those things are passed away. Then uh, uh, Paul writes, Behold, all things are become new. Same person, but you are a brand new person now because you are in Christ Jesus. There is no, there is no funny thing with Christ Jesus because he says what he means and he means what he says. He's not like man. Man say something and do something else or act one way and do something else another way. But Paul tells us, therefore, if any man, if any woman be in Christ, they are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, which makes you a new creation. Same hands, but new hands. Same feet, but new feet. They don't carry you where you used to go. Hands don't do things they used to do. Pick up the bottle. No, 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 you pick up a cup of Kool-Aid. Hallelujah. Or you pick up a ginger ale. Coca-Cola, you don't pick up the bottle. That's for them other folks. But y'all know what? Y'all know what? This word is just not for them other folks. This word is for us also. Because some of us still in our old ways. The old man is not dead. Because we're a new man now, but the old man is not dead. The old man still hanging around. And if he get the chance, he's going to cause you to do something that is not becoming of you. Not only that, when you do that, somebody sees you. We have an all-seeing eye. He sees you. If you look on any, any 5, 10, 50, 5, 10, 20, uh, uh, $50 bill, there is an all-seeing eye on that money. If you can't find it, you need to take your time and look for it. Because he's looking at you, you're looking back at him. And he's telling you now, be careful what you say and what you do. Because I got my eye on you. Hallelujah, somebody. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. The new birth is a spiritual resurrection. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. Now, we might not read all of this, but Paul writes, And you hath he quickened. That word quickened means made alive. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Before you were saved, you were dead in your trespasses and sin. Verse 2 says, Wherein in time past, Ye walk according to the course of this world. Well, we know the world has nothing to offer us anything that's good. 
listen here, according to the prince of the power of the air. Now we know who that is. That's Satan. He is the prince of the power of the air. But here we go. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You are disobedient because you're not doing what the Lord tells you to do. Verse 3, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. We were out there in a world of sin, living and doing everything we think we big enough and bad enough to do. We didn't know about our God back then, but thank God God had his hands on us. Way back when we didn't even know it. Verse 4, but God, listen, but God, somebody said, but God. But God, who is rich in mercy for the great love wherewith he loved us. Y'all, he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, he quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Christ is not dead. He is alive. He is alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Uh, and we're going to sit together in heavenly places in Christ one day. That's if we are born again believers in Christ Jesus. Verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace, grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Boy, God love us so much. Everything he's done for us is in and through his son. Thank God for the son of God, Jesus the Christ. Verse 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Y'all, whenever God gives you a gift, he does not want it in return. Verse 9 says, not of works, lest any man should boast. If man could save you and me, he would go out and tell everybody what he did. I'm so glad it's not he, but I'm so glad it's Jesus the Christ. He was the only one that could save mankind. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We need to read this word so we can walk, live, talk in this word because it's going to take this word to keep us, lead us, guide us, protection, uh, uh, provision. It's going to take this word. Why you say provision, Mac? Because in Ephesians chapter 4, Verse 19, Paul writes, But my God shall supply all your needs. If you need anything, God's got it. Y'all heard what I said? If you need anything, God's got it. Now let me say this to you. God's not going to give you hate. Strife, envy, jealousy, hatred, malice. No, you go someplace else and get that. God's 
going to give you the same thing he's got, which is love. Hallelujah. That's why it's so important for us to understand the love between God and man. Man loves you one way. God loves you the best way. The best way, y'all. God's love is everlasting. And I'm so glad God's love is everlasting. Listen, listen, listen with, to, to what Paul writes in Romans chapter 8. I believe it's verse 5. For God loved us even while we were yet in our sins. We didn't know him. We were living big and bad and bold and doing everything we want to love or do. God loved us because he was watching over us. Hallelujah, somebody. While we were bad doing the things by the spirit of evil, uh, the, the, the prince of this world had us all. And since we confess Jesus Christ, the prince of this world does not have us anymore. We are secured by Jesus Christ. And we are, we are, support, are secured by Jesus Christ until he comes back for his church. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Listen, Paul writes, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Well, again, the spirit teaches us that we should love one another. I don't know why it's so hard for Christians not to love one another. And you say you know the Lord? You're either lying. You're not telling the truth. You need to check yourself. How can you say you love the Lord and hate me? Well, the word tells us, how can you love God? In 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, if a man say he loved God and hateth his brother or his sister, he is a liar. Now, if I was to outright call you a liar, you'd be mad and you'd be wanting to fight. So in that case, if I say this, I have to break up my word and let you read it for yourself. And y'all, I always got my Bible with me, just in case. I tell people all the time, treat your Bible like your American Express card. Don't leave home without it. If you ain't got it in your hand, have it in your heart. David says in the Psalms, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. He didn't say will not, may not. He said, he said that I might not. So that's telling me because I'm saved, I'm going to fall short. All of us fall short of the glory of God. I'm telling you, we're not perfect. We're not a perfect people. We all have flaws still. We all, we all have the other stuff still, envy, jealousy, malice, uh, wrath. But the Bible tells us, Paul writes, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. That goes for boyfriend, girlfriend, husband's wife. If y'all having an argument about something silly, don't go to bed angry. Because when you go to sleep during that night, 
your name could be called of the heavenly road. And you did not get a chance to apologize to ask your wife or husband for forgiveness. That's very important, y'all. How can you not ask for forgiveness when Christians, believers, should know that we must forgive? I listened at the news the other day, and this young man uh, in, 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 in Buffalo, New York, the news man was asking some of those people, how do you feel about him? Man said, sister said, well, I must forgive him. You know why? Because this does not belong to me. You hear what I'm saying? This does not belong to me. It belongs to God who gave it. And he is the only one that could take life or extend life by his grace and his love toward us because he grant us new mercies every morning. Thank you, Lord. Mercy is compassion. God loves us with compassion, so he is a compassionate God. New mercies every morning. So when you start out, Ask the Lord to bless you for this day. Let's, uh, uh, let me go back to 1 John 4 and 20. If, that word, if y'all, either he going to do it or he's not going to do it. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? The Bible lets us know God is a spirit. And those who worship and praise God must worship him in spirit and in truth. You got to be real when you worship in God, because God knows your heart. He knows if you have animosity, jealousy, any of that other stuff that not of him, he sees it. Man look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Hallelujah, somebody. And I'm so glad that he looks at the heart because it keeps me cognizant of what God can do, will do, and does for me. So I have to be cognizant that I have to be careful how I live, how I walk, how I talk, how I act, how I see. Because everything you see is not seen. You can see something and it can fool you. Wife and I was riding home the other day on North Red, and all of a sudden we see the smoke. I said to myself, something burning. See the smoke. And when we got home, they had on the news that a junkyard was burned. Something in there was burning. So, the firemen had to go out of it. But if we have something burning in our lives, y'all, it should be the power of the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. God is in fire. Well, how do you know that, Reverend Mac? Well, in 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 Exodus, when Moses went to the mountain and he saw the burning bush, he saw the fire, 
but the bush was no fire. It was God speaking to him. And God told him, take thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place where you're standing is holy ground. Whenever you come to Jerusalem Baptist Church, and we all get together, we must remember that we are standing on holy ground. Hallelujah. When you come through those doors, the entrance doors, you must be ready to praise and to worship God. Your head's clear, your heart's clear, your mind is clear, and you're ready to serve God. As I said sometime before, before you come to church, let God, you speak to God. And while you're in church, let God speak to you. After you learn, leave church, speak to others. Because you have the Spirit of God living in you. The Word tells us in the Bible, greater is he in 1 John chapter 2, I believe. Greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Well, we know who is in the world. That's the prince of the power of the air. I didn't say the prince of the power of the earth because the earth belongs to God. But it's, he's the prince of the power of the air. So you got to be careful sometime how you breathe in this air. <laughs> because he is the prince of the power of the air. But the earth belongs to God. How you know that, River Mac? In Psalms uh, 20, 24, it says, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Hold it, Reverend Mac. Who is, who is they? They are you, me, the addict, the prostitute, LGBT. All of us belongs to God. Never say, y'all, never say, and that's a bad statement people makes. He made me like this. No, he did not. The Bible says God made male and female. He didn't make him and Shem. Shem is a man or a woman. He made them male and female. Not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. Now, I'm not knocking the um, LGBT uh, people, but I'm just telling you the truth. Never, ever say, God made me like this, because he did not. You made yourself like that because of sin. Y'all know sin will fool people. Sin will cause you to lose everything you got. Sin will cause you to lose your, your, your strength in the Lord. Because when sin enters in, death comes with it. Y'all know when Adam and Eve was in the garden, God told Adam, God was speaking to Adam, and when, 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 when Eve was there, here come this slippery, slimy, little crawly beast. And he, he, he was talking, y'all. I ain't never seen a snake talk. But that snake 
heard what God said. And the snake told Eve, you don't have to believe that. He tell us the same thing. You don't have to believe that. Well, I'm here to tell you, you better believe every word of God. Why? Because it's true. It's the mind of God speaking to you and to me. You, you cannot do that. If you have any conscience of spirituality in you, you would know that's an incorrect statement. If God tells you you can do it, and the other thing tells you you cannot do it, who are you going to believe? You have to make a choice. Just like we got to make a choice. We either want, we're either going to be saved or we're not going to be saved. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ is on his way, coming back to receive his church without spot or wrinkle. That means we got to be ready for him. My heart bled the other night when those three three uh, ladies got slammed by the officer coming out of Ravnell. They were going home. And just at one clip, they were gone. Three beautiful ladies. Life was gone just like that. If they had already made their minds up Jesus is my choice. They are now with him. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So wherever the Lord's at, they're right there. Hallelujah. People, people need to understand when you die, you don't get, you don't get your reward. Get that later. But be happy you with Jesus. I made Jesus my choice a long time ago. But, but because I made him my choice, the enemy knows he's my choice. Just like he tell me, you think you're in Christ. I know I'm in Christ. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Some things you got to know that you know, that you know, that you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your personal Savior. Personal. He is in charge of your life. The new birth issues a new uh, a new sinless nature. A a new not old a new sinless nature. Well, the Bible tells us when Jesus was born being the son of God, he was sinless, could not, did not, would not commit sin. If he did any one of those things, he could not have done what he did for us at Calvary. He hung for us at Calvary because he loved us so much. And the nails didn't hang him on the cross he was kept on the cross by love. Because one of the fellows have to say, if you say who you is, come down. But Jesus didn't pay him no mind. He had to stay there for our sins. That's how people crucified you back then, nailed you to a cross. Just like they nailed him to a cross. 
Most of those other folks didn't survive. Well, they, they didn't survive the um, flagging that he took, the whipping. Because the first time they chop you, you holler. Then you might cuss. Then you might ask them, what's wrong with y'all? But the Bible says Jesus never said a mumbling word. He did that for me and for you and for all of us who are saved by the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad he bled, suffered, and died for me because I tell you what, uh, if I didn't know who he was, I'd be on my way to hell in a handbasket. Just like that. I don't know him. I don't want to know him. And that's what some people say today. You try to witness to him. I don't want to hear that. Let me go over here and get me a beer. You leave them alone. Because some people just don't want to hear the truth. But we got to tell them. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman cometh unto the Father but by me. I used to hear people say in the olden days, I go into heaven anyhow. No, you not. You got to be born again. You got to be born of the corruptible, incorruptible seed. You was born of the corruptible seed. That would make you act the way you did. But now you are of the incorruptible seed and you act a new way. Amen. You walk, you talk, you acting. You no, know, sometimes some of us could act a fool. I told him in Bible study Tuesday, uh, my daddy always tell me, he told me this when I was young, never argue with a fool. Somebody might walk by and don't know who is who. Me being a preacher's son, everybody knew who I was. You see me out there arguing and carrying on and cussing and that with somebody? That's Reb, son. Then I get embarrassed. Somebody say, what you doing? Then I get embarrassed. Hold my head down and walk home. Because I knew it wasn't right. I knew in my, uh, uh, in my heart it wasn't right. But I did it anyway. Because I thought I was big and bad and bold. When I worked at the shipyard, we were on the submarine. And I'll never forget this day. I heard this sailor, this sailor on the ship use God's name in fame. Man, well, I tell you, that opened my eye right there. Because you know that that's all they do. Cussing, carrying on, acting up. And when he said that, it caught my attention. I said to myself, boy, you used to do the same thing. But then I met Jesus. And all that changed. Because God means more to me than the world. He is first in my life. He is, according to the scriptures, the lover of my soul. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He knows my life from the end to the beginning or from the beginning to the end. However you want to say that. He knows already. He knows if you're going to be saved or he knows if you're not.
going to be saved. Why do people come to church and sit on salvation? The doors of the church, the invitation is extended. Come while you have time. Come while you breathe in. Come while you can see the salvation of the Lord. And people sit down. Unconcerned about their own life. So you, like I tell you, you need to be concerned about your life. I'm here to tell you, we're not a perfect people, but every day we're striving for perfection in Christ Jesus. That's the only way we're going to make it if we continue to read God's word. And I say to you, every day, try to read uh, your Bibles. Read the 24th Psalm, 27th Psalm, John uh, St. John 1 through 7, 1 John 1 through 5. Just read it. Let the Spirit speak to you. The Spirit will let you know you're not all who you say you are. He lets you know you're bad and you're good. He shows you your bad side and your good side. He shows you if you're up or down. He shows you if you're down, he can bring you up. You read the Beatitudes, he tell you right there. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall. That word shall is definitive. That means it will happen. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the children of God, for they shall be called peacemakers. Y'all heard what I said? Peacemakers. We don't get out there and act like a fool and carry on and cuss on the can, because believe me, somebody see you and say, don't they go to Jerusalem Baptist Church? Somebody see you, know you, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be in the mall. You could be in the street. You can be driving your car. Doesn't matter. But hallelujah, anyhow, let us love for Jesus Christ. Let us retain the new birth in Jesus. I got one other thing. The new birth it means, John 3, 14. John chapter 3, verse 14. The new birth, it means. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Lifted up means he will be on the cross for you and I. In John uh, 12 and 32, Jesus says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Y'all know we sing that song, but sometimes we sing it wrong. But that's all right, we sing it. But the song says, just like the scripture, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw. Not I'll draw. Jesus is speaking. Not you and me. Will draw all men unto me. Read it for yourself. I, 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 I try to be careful when, when the Spirit speaks how you um, say Scripture. Because, y'all, I've been doing this a long time. 
Ask Sister Hamilton, my sister in Christ. We go back, y'all. Hallelujah. And I am so glad to know such a sister as this. Because both of us are in Christ Jesus, just like my wife back there. We are in Christ Jesus and the Grams and by Littman. Y'all know it's good when we can talk and Deacon Kenny and his wife. Y'all, when we come to church, we don't come to church to play. We come to receive something. We come to receive a word from the Lord. There's always a word. I have one more thing. The new birth, new birth is threefold proof. First John chapter 5, verse 1. The new birth is threefold proof. First John chapter 1. Verse Verse 5, verse 1. First John. First John. First John, chapter 5, verse 1. First John, back of the Bible. There it is. Whosoever, there go that word again, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Wow, that's a lot of words. But uh, let me tell you this. Whoever believeth that Jesus is is to Christ, is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth, our God begat Jesus Christ. Also, that is begotten of him. God and Jesus Christ is in that scripture. Because God gave his only begotten son. In, in Luke chapter 1, Verse 35, you read that story right there. It says, Mary, out of all the women God chose, he chose Mary. She was overshadowed with the Holy Spirit. And she conceived the Son of God. A lot of people don't believe this is true. God the Son is the Son of God. Same thing. Why you don't believe that? Because it's true. God the Son is the Son of God. But there are some people out there don't believe that. There are some preachers out there don't believe that. There are some preachers out there that believe you can lose your salvation. You can't. That means that Jesus would have to come back and die again for your salvation. That's why we read in the opening scripture, he suffered once for the sins of many. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. You all write that scripture down? Because it will come back to you. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to wind it up. But let me say to you, if you're not a member of any church and you would like to come and be a part of this Christian family of baptized believers in Christ Jesus, 
Jerusalem Baptist Church, 684 Rutledge Avenue. Our phone number, 843-723-0187. Or you can get in touch with our administration, administration offer, 692 Rutledge Avenue, Charleston, South Carolina. Phone number 843. Well, this zip is 29403. I guess they're both the same. They're right next door. Yeah, we will welcome you here because I'm going to tell you right now, we are a church with a mission. And our mission is that folks be saved by the blood of Jesus. Watch this. God bless you. I love you. And ain't a thing you can do about that. Reverend Mac, I, I, I ain't afraid to tell you. I love you. And I mean this part. Ain't nothing you can do but that. Let us pray. Turn to God, our Father. Lord, we thank you for this time that we have with you in, your, in the study of your word. Continue to teach me that I may teach others about you, O oh God. Because you, there is none like you, Lord. None like you. And hallelujah, we are so glad that you are our Father and we are your children. You love us first and we love you. Because God, you did so much for us. We bless your name. We praise your name, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.